Okay, uh, it's good to have uh, Jenna here to talk about a horrifying story of a foreign laborer beaten mm. by a bunch of uh, high school students. Mm. And we don't know where the violence came, came from, really. Mm. But uh, I think it's worth talking about how actually violence can be um, transmitted. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean. Um, there's a lot of xenophobia in a lot of countries, so it's not just Taiwan, it's not just, you know, um, here that that happens, this definitely happens in Canada and other countries, you know, all around. In Germany. Europe. In Germany is yeah. a huge problem. Um, so it happens a lot, but uh, it was in the news because it's also been linked to um, how they're planning to split the minimum wage in Taiwan now. So um, minimum wage would be only for Taiwanese workers and then companies will be able to decide, Western workers, what their minimum wage would be. Um, so they're saying, oh, this is kind of xenophobic as well. And then they're kind of linking it to this video um, of this migrant worker, which it didn't say anything about why this happened to him. They don't really know. But it is a problem. I've had friends here who have been you know, beaten up by Taiwanese people, um, mm -hmm. and that person that I remember talking to about it, he said it was like really for no reason whatsoever, except that he told them he was American, and then they just started following him and picking on him, and then they just beat him down in an alley. So it's happened to people I know here, and I've heard lots of situations about it. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I think I personally never really felt discriminated against in other countries. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've really heard a lot of stories of just, you said the word xenophobia, which is afraid, being afraid of foreigners. Because mm -hmm. phobia is uh, fear. That's right. Right. So, um, but uh, you see, we really need to just make contact with other people to see that they're no different from us. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah, Americans are different in terms of their education and their, their values and um, say even Thai people, Indonesians, uh, uh, the foreign workers here are, you know, all come from different uh, cultures. But if there is um, social injustice, for example, like uh, the wages, uh, the wage difference, mm -hmm. um, Feel people, Taiwanese people feeling their jobs are taken by foreigners, mm -hmm. there might be resentment, mm -hmm. right? So I am sort of uh, for equality between all workers if they mm -hmm. are legal because um, when I was in the States I never uh, felt like I had to get a lower salary mm -hmm. because I'm from a different country. That's right. So I'm not sure why uh, foreign wages should be lower. Right. Well, I guess what they were saying in that other article was that because a lot of companies were going out of business because they couldn't afford to pay the Taiwanese workers because they had also had to pay the foreign workers the same amount. But I don't think that that's really a, a reason, to be honest with you. I mean, in Canada, the migrant workers are paid the same minimum wage as other workers. And there is xenophobia, but it's not a, as much. I don't think it's like a huge problem, but Canada has... You see, the, the thing is, I got somebody who was talking on the radio, uh, uh, and her name is Chen, Wen Chen. Okay. And I think she was basically for uh, importing, like, um, uh, hiring, I shouldn't say importing, uh, hiring, uh, like, uh, cheaper... Yeah. I think so. Laborers. Um, but at the same time, um, why? I mean, this is almost like racism to me. Yeah. In a way, it's just in like a way, uh, people because Right, of, yeah. right. But it's like almost like a, a type of slavery. Mm -hmm. um, I think her argument was the fact that we can't really hire. Um, say people of a certain salary here mm -hmm. because it's higher mm -hmm. so people can't really hire people to caretake their parents yeah they are not they can't afford but you see at the same time isn't this ours the, the problem as a uh, as a nation like can shouldn't we have like a elderly care system 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, isn't that, I mean, shouldn't you just uh, look at the problems in the government? Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little, just, I'm a little, I, I feel a little contradicted because um, at the same time, I feel like older people need to be taken care of. The, mm -hmm hospitalized ones, we need to hire like people, but at the same time we can't afford them. So whose responsibility is? Isn't this government's responsibility? Yeah, really. And I mean, Taiwan has an aging population, so I think it's something that's really important to look at, especially in the next 10 to 20 years, there's going to be a lot more people. And most of the world's population is aging right now. Does right. Taiwan like have pension benefits or like old time? I we have pension Canada benefits, but it's not enough to uh, to get a caretaker. Okay. Uh, and for the same type of care, we, we, we basically need to pay like 40000 a month. And okay. that's most uh, families cannot afford. Okay. So yeah. I was wondering whether um, the government should be giving out like budgets. Right. Or they should have some like effective low income. Like for example in Canada, we have these communities where seniors can live on their own but they're monitored. So they have their own apartment but they have somebody that always stops by every once in a while to check and make sure everything's okay. And mm -hmm. then once they can no longer, you know, live there and take care of themselves. You then see, but they that's can also move. against yeah. the, the Asian like the Chinese Taiwanese sort of values that we need to be filial, you know, filial. Yeah, priority. I know, I know. So this is a very controversial. It's a really uh, difficult uh, question. Yeah. Uh, problem. And, and especially for older people because they really feel that they're in that age bracket where filial piety is more important to them. You know. But don't. Uh, Americans hire like the Filipino workers? Sometimes, but not usually. Usually old people in like America and Canada are really independent. They want their independence. They want to be in their own apartment, you know, in their own community until they absolutely can no longer take care of themselves. And then they don't want to put that burden on their families. So it's kind of like the opposite effect where they're still, even though they're old, they're still kind of taking care of you in a way like... You see, there's a lot of abuse problems, uh, you see, either by the the, <clears throat> the person who hires, mm -hmm. uh, like sex abuse, yeah. violence, but also by the employees. Yeah. Because they would be abusing the old, older people. Yeah, you and, see that, yeah. You know, I've seen a lot of footage, like YouTube of course, footage, of, of those uh, foreign workers like abusing older people. Mm -hmm. So it's really something we should look in, look at, and uh, and then see if we can pass laws or uh, alter policies to. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a big problem. It's not like we can talk about this and it's done tomorrow. Yeah. But I'm personally against sort of like, okay, people from foreign country are, should be cheaper. Yeah, I don't think that that's I think that's slavery. Yeah, it's not. Just because you're not from Taiwan, you have to get a smaller salary. I think it's it's more based on your credential of work. If you have like a you know, degree or something mm -hmm. as a care person, then you, I mean, yes, they're making more money than they would probably in their own countries. But I was thinking there might be a solution. For example, like the government would be subsidizing the caretakers. Right, I think that would be for better. For example, yeah, right? Yeah. So they get proper training and they also get maybe some type of salary from organizations that can right. make profit. That's right, yeah. So that might be a solution, but yeah. you see governments are not that smart. No, or I mean the government could provide some of the salary and then, you know... They're the, not smart. Yeah. They're stupid. <laughs> I guess so, I mean, it's not just migrant workers from those countries, <laughs> it's like others They're just as well, stupid. but it's... They're yeah. stupid. I'm just, you know, xenophobia. <laughs> it's a scary thing, though. Generally, like Sorry. not just this, but I mean. I mean, this is a, know. this this takes really a long time, and I, I know there is not going to be an answer. So that's why I just start speaking. You know, like, <laughs> I know, I know. Stupid, government but stupid. They're busy. They're busy taking B 
beef with risotto <laughs> and I know, and Asian flu. But when you were in the U.S., didn't weren't there times where you felt like, or maybe when you first got there, a little bit nervous because you weren't in the majority, like racial majority? Or no, I've maybe always you were been in proud. You've always been fine, right? I, I've always been proud. Like I'm from Taiwan, you know. Mm -hmm. I've got a. I, I'm, I'm from a different background. I can totally contribute. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. I mean, like here, I don't get terribly scared because I'm a girl. But I think that there's times when people do say things about me that I have you no idea. You should probably be or, scared walking in the underpass. Yeah, I guess so. For sure. Because I might get beaten up by some people. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. I don't walk in underpasses, so it's don't. okay. <laughs>